So this is a brief introduction to the Miniray 3000 PID monitor. Now this model is primarily focused at the occupational hygiene market, so we're looking at health and safety and uh, occupational exposure levels with this unit. The Miniray Lite, its little brother, is essentially more for the environmental remediation market where we don't require uh, the occupational hygiene monitoring modes. So, on the Miniray 3000, you can see here that we've got the display up and we're reading 0.0, .0 ppm, so it's telling me that I've got no contaminants in my environment at the moment. So, you'll see several options here, one of them being alarm, power, and this across arrow. Now, if I press this across arrow, because we're in occupational hygiene mode on the Miniray 3000, we've got time-weighted average values, style values, and peak values. Now this is useful for looking at occupational exposure values for the, a monitoring period. Now we can clear this if we wish, so if we're walking around a factory or something like that, we could clear and start again and look at what a TWA style or peak value is in, within a particular area. We've got date, time, temperature here as well. Start data log interval, 60 seconds. So my unit is set up to not automatically data log. You can, in the settings of the unit, tell it to automatically data log, which means the instant it's turned on, it will be data logging whatever you do. Now, for myself, I can say yes, and it will start data logging what I can do, and I can go back to that menu to stop it. Cal reference gas, so we're uh, calibrated to isobutylene here. Now we can change this if we wish. We're not going to. Measurement gas, so this is what we're currently measuring, is isobutylene, and I can change that if I wish to as well. So if I say yes, it drops into this um, menu here, which means I can go to a gas library, select, and I can scroll through, and I could select a particular VOC that I would like to see monitor. Now this doesn't mean it will monitor that VOC only, but it means the measurements it gives will be the equivalent concentration of that VOC if that was the only VOC in your atmosphere. Now I'm not going to bother with this, so I'm going to go back. And then we've got the last menu which is enter PC communications mode. Now you need to drop into this if you're going to communicate with a PC at all. And that's it for the basic menus of the Miniray 3000. Now, there are further options here, so if we press power and no, we get into several menus, so we've got calibration, measurement, alarm, data logging, and monitor setup. So, under calibration, if you watch one of my other videos, we'll show you how to calibrate the Miniray 3000. But under here, we've got zero calibration, span calibration, bump check, and back to zero calibration. If we go to measurements, we select this, we've got measurement gas, measurement units, tube selection is hashed out, that's only for the Ultra Ray 3000 if you'd like to do benzene specific measurements, and that's it for this menu. Alarms, if we drop into this, this is where we can change high alarm values, low alarm values, stellar alarm values, TWA alarm values, the alarm mode, so that's auto reset and latching. Buzzer and light setup, so this is where we can have both on, light only, buzzer only, both off. And that's it for the alarm menu. So if we go back again, data logging menu, if we drop into here, so first of all I can clear the data log if I wish. I can change the data log interval, so I'm going to do that. So it's currently set at 60 seconds. I'm going to set mine at quite a high resolution, so I'm going to put a zero here. I'm going to have it set to 15 seconds to data log. So that means every 15 seconds. So that's now set to 15 seconds. And we have data log type as well. So this is where you can do automatic and manual. So I'm going to change my monitor so it's now automatic. That means whenever I start the monitor, it will start automatically data logging. And that's the data log menu for you. We now have the monitor setup menu, so if I drop into this, so we have operation mode, and this is where you can have it in occupational hygiene mode or survey mode. If you put it in survey mode, you won't get your STELs, TWAs, and peak values. 
site ID. So you could enter a site ID now, which means when it data logs, it will give that ID to your data log. Same with user ID. User mode, if we drop into this, you have viewer, basic, and advanced. Uh, this basically means that you can limit the functionality of the unit dependent on what the user is. Now you can set this up normally through the PC, it's better done that way. Date, time, pump duty cycle. Now if I drop into this, this is where I can make the pump run faster or slower. Now this can be useful if you want to conserve the battery on your unit. Temperature units, so degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. Language, real-time protocol, I'm not going to go into that. Power on zero, that means it zeroes at the point that the unit turns on. And that's what we're going to look at. So, the Mini Ray 3000 and the Mini Ray Lite. Which would you choose? So my advice is, if you're working in the occupational hygiene field, so occupational health and safety, where you require to have data logged points and to be able to see STELs and TWAs, virtually always go for the Mini Ray 3000. However, if you're working in the environmental field where it's not necessary to data log what you're seeing, and you quite literally just want to use it as a point and shoot device to get an idea of whether contamination is present or not, I'd go for the Mini Ray 3000. Essentially they're both the same unit, just with slightly different functionality. Um, they're a very hard unit, you can really knock these around, uh, but they do give very good accurate readings, and it will take a lot to actually kill these, unlike other manufacturers. So I would always go for Ray Systems, Mini Ray 3000s if I want a PID monitor. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope this has been useful.